What up, nerds? So we're going to do a deck tech for this Grixis list that I've put together and has not been performing very well. But it's still fun. It's still a tribal deck. People like tribal decks. Um, uh, it's a typal deck. Typal oh. deck. Is that the, what they... That's they, the new... I was talking pointage. about that earlier. It's the new, yep. Yeah, they want to get away from the word tribal yep. for... So it's, it is a typal PR deck. PR reasons. Yep. Uh, it has deck. some other reasons, too. Yeah, Which is funny because there's a card type with typal in it. Nice. All right, so first off, the mana base is wonky. Garbage. Um, I did a whole bunch of two ofs, and so the the thought process here was that blue was the least used card. Um, so I did like two of the red black and two of the red blue, and one of the black blue. I don't know what I did, honestly. Yeah, you're but, kind of like yeah, all over I the got, place here. And the other know? problem is like I do want early untapped lands, so like shipwreck marsh and stormgrave coast and haunted mm. ridge, like aren't good in the early game, so I didn't want as many of those, but then Dark Slick Shores and Spire Bluff and Black Cleave are, like, bad in the late game. It's, it's hard because it's, like, early game. Like, yeah. Those are so all So I, I haven't found the right balance. If you have that a good... So I guess if you have... The other issue is that all the Grixis lists I can find are mostly black, and this is mostly red. So the well, lands... Can you, can you swap it back and forth? Here? Maybe. I haven't played with it. Um, so, like, I couldn't find a Grixis mana base that worked for the distribution of colors I'm using. So I still have to worry about that. So anyways, that's the lands. I put a, a swamp, two mountains, and an island in because I wanted four basics for the two fabled passages. Um, and then I have an Urborg, which I don't think in two weeks I've drawn this a single time. Um, and I don't know that it's really worth having it in the deck, so it might get cut. And the same kind of goes for Takanuma. I don't know if it's... Do you ever use it? I haven't used it yet. I think every time you've ever played it against me... I haven't it, used it Not yet. even just this deck, but in, like, other decks, it's always just a land. Well, in the Gol Golgari or Mono Black deck, there's enough creatures. But this has, like, 13 mm -hmm. creatures, and you kind of want them in there anyways. Like, Quake Bringers in there are fine. So I might cut those two just to make the color distribution a little bit better. Um, so anyways, going into the cards. Four Thoughtseize, four Fatal Push just for hand disruption removal. And then I tried Volcanic Spite this week, and again, I think I only cast it once tonight, um, but it's three damage, and then, because I'm really good at flooding, <laughs> you can put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library, and if you do, draw a card. So I wanted to try it out for that aspect. Um, and last week I was running the Invasion of the Giants in this slot, and I hated it. I was, like, set on the, oh, cool, Chapter 3 goes off, I can cast Bone Crusher mm -hmm. for one red, it's great value. Because it's awesome and standard? Yeah, but then, well, it wasn't. <laughs> but then whenever I drew it, I did it, like, you cast it and it doesn't replace itself. Yeah. And then, I think I probably forgot to draw a card off of it at one point. And then, like, if I mill the invasion, <laughs> it didn't work. But if I mill this, I can still cast it anyways. Yeah. So I like that. I may put a fourth in. I'm not sure on that one. Um, I was running two Croxes last week and one this week because I kept seeing them in multiples last week and I didn't like it. No? So one Croxa um, could make the argument for two, but I don't think you want more than that, uh, especially because uh, with the next card, Fable, you can't yeah. copy the Croxa. Uh, so. But I, the thought process was like, it's also a disruption spell, um, and then like you're going to be milling yourself a little bit so then you can end up flashing it back or escaping sure. it, you know, easier. Uh, four fables because you're playing red and it's in the format, so sure. you have to use it. Um, four bone crushers because it's probably one of the most useful giants in the game, well, probably. It's like just the card by itself is just like, a really good card. Yeah. Um, and then I I've, I've been trying this. I have a love hate relationship with it. So like on paper, milling three. Kind of who cares, but if you hit, like, a Bone cr or a bone Crusher, um, a Glimpse the Cosmos or a Quake Bringer, like, that's cool. Um, but, like, you drawing and your opponent discarding is, like, a really good tempo play. But the problem is, when you're playing against all this aggro, like, you uh, can't take the time to make a tempo play. It's so, it's so weird because, like, having played against this, mm -hmm. like, when you, when you play the deck, it kind of, like, it kind of feels bad. But I can probably, like, you playing that probably buys me right. a turn or right. two. Like, right, and that's the whole thing I've had against the battles from the beginning is, like, I have to then take the time to attack it. Right. And if I have the time, great. And This then helps I can, with it. Yeah, and, like, milling the cards, and, like, I can't, I mean, I could copy a Croxa and then it just mm -hmm. dies, but, like, 
if you copy a calamity bearer or something, like it mm-hmm. can it can be really powerful, but at the same time, like it's too I feel like Pioneer's too fast of a format. To yeah, I don't I don't know that that's necessarily Yeah. I'm I'm happy to see you play. Right. I, guess I took I out at like, least one of them against you, and then I think I still drew it anyways. And it felt bad. Right. Uh, four calamity bearers because this card is bonkers. Um, I was talking. I don't. I think it was round one. I was talking about it during sideboarding. I played a game on arena, and I had fables in play. Two of them. So I copied on their end step, and I made like seven copies of calamity bearer, <laughs> and then attacked with them all. And it doubles each time. Yeah. So it goes from 3 to 6 to 12 to 24 to 48 to 96. And I think I did like 40,000 damage or something <laughs> stupid. Um, I yeah, just wanted to see seems, if it would crash the client. Seems, it did Seems about right, um, yeah. So that's why that's there. Sometimes dr- I end up drawing them and I don't want them, though, because if I'm trying to stabilize. Yeah. So it might be something worth sideboarding out, like, one or two of them. Because um, on their own, they don't really do a whole lot. And you... If you're getting to the late game, you don't really need them to win either. Right. It's just like the combo. Uh, Quakebringer, I really like, and I think it's I think it's a bit underrated. Um, you you forgot about the can't gain life last week when he was doing yeah. his safekeeping, and that's always saved you. And I got to stop yeah. your life game with it. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's also it's that one line of text on the card that just doesn't right, make sense. Right. And then there's still five more yeah, lines and yeah. then there's still four tell sorry there's six more lines right. and then there's four tell which is another four lines yeah um but yeah basically like it's kind of it synergizes with the other pieces like you discard them or you mill them mm-hmm. and then you're still dealing damage with them and then when this flips you can copy one um, yeah i definitely so just, am like i'm definitely more afraid of this than i am of this yeah and this trades with shielded which is kind of nice and it stops the other Sides life gain. Sure. It doesn't stop your life loss, but then you trade and it still does stuff from the graveyard. Yeah. So I like that. Uh, and then squash because it's six damage. It deals with your freaking coma. Um, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, it does if I have the ability to cast it before you make right. a token. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to be changing in the main deck. I kind of want more card draw, so I might put a glimpse in. And I haven't really liked these two lands, so I'll probably look to change so, those. So, I guess I got it. So, what I want to ask here is like on the chopping block for the main deck, mm-hmm. for the main, just the the card portion of it. Is it like here? I still and want then this, this to like be a good. Flex? I still want this to be but, good. But if you okay, so if you had to pick two cards that need to be swapped out, what it's are they? Probably one calamity bearer. I guess depending on the meta, maybe a squash. I still want to try this. It's still a card advantage, but it's usually too slow. And I, I pull them out against aggro. So I'm looking at this going, that's a blue source gone. Yeah, and if I take those out, I'm playing Rakdos, and then I know, already no, no, no. know there's a better Rakdos deck to you play. Just play. You play Glimpse, but like your mana base gets better. <laughs> it doesn't, though. It does, because to run, is three to run Glimpse on two with blue sources. I think the number is still don't, 13. Don't even need glimpse on Ask two. Ask Frank Karsten. You don't even need glimpse on two. You do, but you, you don't. don't. <laughs> you never have it where, where that actually matters. But So, your sideboard. Yeah, so in our meta game, which is not a very good sample size no. at all, um, I put in the Alpine Moons against Lotus Field, because if Ray shows up, that's what he's playing. Sure. Um, negates, I don't know, because maybe I hit a, something with it. Removal spells it's or just something. A, it's yeah, just a good it's catch-all. Catch uh, blot outs for your coma, but it turns out running three wasn't enough, so maybe I just run four of those. Um, I put the needle in because it's a good catch-all. I thought if anyone was playing Rakdos, naming Blood Tithe Harvester is pretty good. You can name reflections of Kiki Jiki, but then you have to cut yours. Sure. Um, and I guess against you, like I could name Eugene. Uh, sure. And then, so I, I guess put these like this. So the Brotherhood's ends and the battle were against aggro. And of course, like when I was able to cast that on three, Brave the Elements comes out, and I have yet to cast a Battle of Frost and Fire. Uh, when it was in standard, okay. I liked casting it, but. This is the one I was thinking. Yeah, it's of. the one-sided board wipe, basically. Um, although it does hit my tokens. The sure. Goblins. 
Um, I tried this this week. I forgot it was a card, and I was flipping through my boxes, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, that seems pretty good against white and blue, which the only people playing white and blue are playing mono white aggro. So it's basically kills Adeline. Um, but again, they just nice. have brave the elements whenever you cast it. Nice. So. And then Magma Spray, because I wanted another one-drop removal spell and Roast against Shieldred and your Polyphronos. I don't remember his real name, sorry. Hydrocoil Engine. Hydrocoil Engine, that's yeah. right. Um, so the sideboard is a mess. Last week, I think it was like, there was four cards in the sideboard that are still in it. <laughs> like, I think it was like these three, and maybe the Brotherhood's ends and the Roast. So like, I changed nine cards out of the sideboard so or something. The the sideboard for this is really dedicated to like Arma here, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's probably not even built well because I literally slapped it together this morning. Right. So he's probably gonna go home. He's gonna cut like three, four cards. He's gonna add them, those cards the in for like blot out. coma and and whatever else. Fourth is there. blot out. Yeah. Maybe some other sacrifice effects. Sure. That are only the highest CMC. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It was fun to play it. I don't know if I'm really feeling it, but I'm not really feeling anything in Pioneer right now. I don't want to be the person that just finds the Tier 1 decks, you know, <laughs> sleeves it up and then just whoops on everybody at the shop. But I also kind of get frustrated when, you know, you try to play a brew and you can't actually play it because you get whooped on by the Tier 1 decks that show up. Because you get whooped on by the brew? No, I got mono white. It was like a 10-minute round or something. And that was frustrating. Because you got whooped on by the brew. And because I got whooped on by the brew. <laughs> because I drew four lands. I drew lands, uh, fable, discard two So if lands. you're watching this before you get to, <laughs> to, to round three, uh, let, us, let us know which one you actually like, which video you saw first, if it's the, yeah. if it's the deck tech or if it's... Well, it's going to be the deck tech, so I'll post this earlier. And, but you never know. People might wait. You know, Maybe. They, they might not watch Maybe. the deck tags or something. Yeah, my draws against you are know. always horrible, and your draws against me are always baller. It was great. Ballers, it was amazing. So. Yeah. Until they're not, and then yeah. like I Anyways, just get stomped. If you have a good Grixis mana base that favors red over everything else, drop it in in the comments because I definitely need to work on the mana base. It doesn't feel horrible; it just doesn't feel correct yet. Cool, cool. Thanks for watching. <laughs>